following is a special presentation of TNN Motorsports. Sunday morning, 38 weeks ago, two top fuelers cackling in the California sunshine kicked off the 1996 NHRA Winston Drag Racing Campaign. After crisscrossing the continent to 19 national events in a roller coaster ride of triumph and tragedy, the quickest cars on earth return to that same performance playground for the season ending Winston Select Finals. Only two cars in each category remain in competition, and their last act will now be played out on Pomona stage, live here on the Nashville Network. is setting on the Pomona Raceway track as well as on the season on the NHRA's Winston Championship Tour for 1996. But for a handful of competitors, there's one shot at glory left. The Winston Select Finals are coming to you live from Pomona, California. As always, the flag coming down out of the sky as they just get set for the finals. We've got just a one round left of racing here in the 1996 season. Hi, everybody. Glad to have you here with us. It has been a tremendous day of racing so far here at Pomona. And what a great way to wrap up a tremendous 1996 season. But, you know, if you were with us earlier today, live here on NHRA Today, you saw what a Department of Tourism kind of day it was weather-wise. Well, as you can see, as we marched on through the rounds here this afternoon, things dramatically changed. Look at those clouds. And trust me, even though the temperatures don't look freezing cold, it sure feels like it outside. And it's going to be a real challenge for the tuners to get these machines ready to go racing. Now, the one thing we need to concentrate on the most off here in the beginning is top fuel points. Don't forget the banquet is tomorrow night. The top 10 point people still have a chance to move up or down in the standings, and it makes a big difference in the size of the check you get tomorrow night. So everybody in the top 10 looking to move upwards towards the front where Kenny Bernstein sits atop the championship. Now, let's show you the top fuel ladder as we got set for round one competition. This is our Valvoline ladder, and here is all the matchups on the top half of that ladder. Corey Mack, Robert Real, Hill, Dixon, Scott Coletta, Busby, Bernstein, and Coletta. To the bottom side where Amato would go up against Sarver, Dunn and Tony Schumacher, Head, Gibson, Vandegrift, and Shelly Anderson. Well, that would be how they would match up, but how would they perform in round one here at Pomona? Let's take you back to earlier today and show it to you. Robert Reel in the left side of your screen going up against Corey Mack. This is round one from earlier today. Reel smokes the tires. Corey Mack tries to fly the front end. He gets the wheel stand and the win as he pedaled it all the way to the far end of the racetrack with a 568, but he wasn't happy. Yeah, I was shaking and the front end came up. I had to pedal it. First thing I thought was get it back down and get to the wind line because we need two rounds to make sure we finish number two in this thing. So <laughs> There's a good look at that tire. You can see the front end bent up on the McDonald's machine. Kenny Bernstein, the new champ, going up against Connie Coletta. Coletta in the nearly new go on board with KB. The Bud King blazes down the quarter mile to a 468 at 310 as Connie Coletta hazes them and shuts it off. Next up, Bruce Sarver right there, the CarQuest car, going up against Joe Amato. And young Mr. Brock doing a great job of tuning this machine. Amato, a 462, low ET of round number one. On to round number two, the top fuel cars with March Shelly Anderson going up against Jim Head. Alan Johnson working his magic on the smoking Joe's car. But he was in for a fight with Shelly. Head gets the win. The Smoke and Joe's machine on 467 and 304. Could Alan Johnson do it again? Corey Mack, Larry Dixon. Corey Mack would red light. Dixon would haze the tires. Is Corey kicking himself in the car? You bet. Early vacation to Lake Havasu for Corey Mack. Now the top fuel ladder after round number two. There you see how they ma marched on McLennan and Dixon, Coletta Bernstein, and then it would be Dixon going up against Scott Coletta in the semifinals of Top Fuel. On the bottom side, 
Amato and Jim Head would get past Schumacher and Shelly Anderson. They would match up in the semifinals of Top Fuel. Here they are. The final four. Dixon in the near lane. Scott Coletta in the far lane. No championship for Scott, but could he get the bonus money? Remember, he won the Bud Classic. Dixon gets beat. Scott Coletta marching on. He had a one-tenth of an advantage at the start. They both run 470. Scott Coletta goes to the finals, staring at the bonus money. Jim had Joe Amato. Head goes up in smoke. And Joe Amato goes on to the win with a 463 at a blazing 314. I send you down to my good buddy Steve Evans down in those nitro pits. To be precise, I'm in Joe Amato's pit. He's encouraging the crew, giving them neck rubs. They have really busted their butts today. Well, Steve, they worked real hard. We had to change one engine, a couple rear ends, and uh, we got down to about 65 minutes. We had to get the car prepared because they're running late in the TV schedule. But we're having a lot of fun, trust me. You were so depressed yesterday afternoon. You got beat on a hole shot in the Bud Classic. Today, the passionate Joe Amato's back. Well, you know, I, I went to bed. And Jimmy Proc had a little meeting with the team yesterday, and he said, today's today, and tomorrow's a new day. Let's all sit down tomorrow, regroup, come out, and then we'll go out and try and win this race to, to do it for the, all the sponsors and all the, the folks that have been stood by Joe Motto and our whole team. And the team's doing a tremendous job all year. And, and Joe Motto's, you know, trying to drive the car to stay up with the team. But uh, the Keystone Key part special, all our customers and friends, all the people back home, we love you. We're going to try and win, bring one home for the Gipper, and this will put us in a special league. We'll tell you about that if we get to the final. <laughs> he is pumped up. Right now, it gives me great pleasure for the final time this year to introduce to you the third member of our roving broadcast band, Bob Fry. I gotta laugh, Steve. We've only talked to Joe Amato. We're already running overtime. Scott Coletta sitting here, and Scott, if, if I can use the term, if you guys could double up and win this thing, you could salvage this year. Yeah, that's for sure. You know, it'd make it a lot easier to uh, get through the winter, but uh, yeah, we would have liked to win it all, but uh, yeah, that'll definitely help. We need the money anyway, as you can see by the motors laying there. Uh, both trailers empty are empty. Well, the trailers may be empty, but the bank account won't be. If they can double up, it's a lot of bucks. Let's go back to the booth, Ralph. That's the only way you can go racing. It is season finale. It's throw everything you got in the trailer into the race car. And let's take a look at the head-to-head -head matchup. As you can see, they have met three times in eliminations. Amato leads the series two to one. But Scott Collette has got a lot of money up for grabs if he could just win the Winston Select Finals. TNN's exclusive live coverage of the Winston Select Finals is brought to you by Mopar, Chrysler Corporation Parts, and the Chrysler Plymouth Dodge Jeep and Eagle dealers who sell and install them. There's nothing funny about these 6,000 horsepower Sunday funnies on the NHRA Tour. Let's take a look at the funny car point standings as the Winston Championship has already been handed out to John Force, I think, back here in Pomona when we started this thing in January. Tony Pedregon, Cruz Pedregon battling for second. Let's take a look back through the bottom half of that top ten. Again, everybody fighting for money as this is the last race on the tour. And, of course, those guys are going to have to find out who they were going to go up against in round number one. So let's show you the ladder here as they got set for the first round of eliminations on our Valvoline Funny Car Ladder. Hartman and Higley, Oren Oswald, Hoffman, Hoover, Force, and Poldy. To the other side, the bottom half, Wilkerson and Densham, Scusa, Okazaki, Tony and Cruz, Worsham and Neely. That's how they would stack up, but how would they fare in competition? Ah, uh, round one with the Funny Cars here at Pomona. Ray Higley in the near lane, Richard Hartman in the far lane. Off the line, smoky tires will spell doom for Hartman. Higley, the old fuel altered driver to a 558 and a wind light. This was the key matchup of round one. Cruz and Tony fighting for number two in the Winston Point Championship. And younger brother puts it to the old guy. Tony Petragon near the wall. He never lifts, and he goes on to a 498 win, 294. Car dropped the cylinder and it moved over to the right, almost hit the wall. But, uh, you know, Cruz and them, we give them all the credit in the world. Uh, they're a good team to race against. They're going to be back next year, but this is great for myself and the crew chiefs that made it all happen, and uh, Cashwell, especially John Forrest. 
Tony Pendragon had never been so emotional. That's John Howell from Castro. He said it was the greatest moment in his sporting career. He's done everything, played football in high school. He's done some boxing as the crew comes over. And he said, beating his brother for second in the points, he congratulates his crew chief, John Medlin, was the most emotional thing he'd ever done. Didn't even get any sleep last night. He spent so much time thinking about it. Round two, Kenji Okazaki, the Moon Ice car, and Tim Wilkerson, who's having a great weekend here. Off the line, and Kenji would make Big Jim a uh, happy guy as he would join the four-second club. That would be Wilkerson earlier in the weekend, but Kenji with a 5.19 at 2.99 would get the win. Higley up against the in-and-out car, and the in-and-out car would go up and smoke, but so would Higley. How about it, Mark Oswald, find the throttle. There it goes, and you get the win like never, ever, ever give up. Oswald moves on. Now, this is something trick that only TNN can bring you. We have got telemetry with a funny car. Insane, you say? You bet. But that's TNN Motorsports, and that is a tire temperature on a burnout. 640 degrees. What does it do when you go race one of these things? Pretty toasty. Dell Worship providing the heat sensor. Let's show you the ladder now as they got through as we go back to our Valvoline ladder, setting ourselves up for our semifinals. Higley, Oswald, Hoffman, Force. Oswald and Force would both move on. Former champs, Wilkerson and Okazaki. Tony Pedragon going up against Kenji in the semis. Down to four funny cards. Could Tony Pedragon meet the boss one more time? How about Kenji? He's got a whole contingent from Japan over here watching him. Oh, Kenji. A red light and such a strong run. He would have had Tony welded. He welded himself, unfortunately. Oswald and Force. Gotta love the black card, John. Absolutely beautiful. Don't lose the flames. Force up against Oswald. Oswald said, my car's possessed and it's close to Halloween. Not enough for the guy who was born on Halloween. Force gets the win, a 497. That's one scary looking car, Steve. I agree. Save the flames for us. This may not be the bouncy John you're used to seeing. He got a bad meatball last night at a reception. Has a bit of food poisoning. But your driving certainly hasn't suffered from it. Well, I really thank the Lord today. I got a good old hot rod. She's just making magic out there, Steve. You were accomplishing this season everything you set out to do and more. Well, the whole trick after Indy when we won and locked up the title was to get Tony that number two spot and get even for 92. And uh, Cruz is a great racer, but Tony got him today. And uh, we're just really excited that we did that. And most importantly, the fans are going to see a side-by-side -side go for it race here. Oh, yeah. If I can get to the start line, I'm a little down on tired. thing I'm really, really trying to do is keep this uh, black-flamed uh, uh, action collectible hot rod alive till I can get her home because she's going to the museum. Go lay down, will you? Bob Fry is, well, Bob Fry is about 20 feet that way. <laughs> You see a pattern developing. Looks like an instant replay over here. Rover from the force pit over here to Tony Pedregon. And Tony, I mean, after beating your brother, finishing number two in the points and everything, is this final round anticlimactic? Well, you know, we've seen this picture a few times in the final round, but I think we've got a real good shot at beating John this time. Our car ran a couple of fours in the first two rounds, and it fell off in the semifinals. Uh, we know why, because we were a little bit on the edge, but um, we've just got a good shot at beating him. You know, it's been uh, an emotional day, a big day for us. And uh, we can't think of a better way to end this thing. We're really going to try and beat John. I'm not sure if he's under contract or not. If he is, he'll probably beat John. If not, ah, you never can tell. Ralph? Oh, it should be a tremendous head-to-head -head fight between these two. They've matched up before eight times in eliminations. Force leads at 7-1. Can Tony make it 7-2? He's done well with the number two already, taking the second spot in the points championship. <laughs> TNN's exclusive live coverage of the Winston Select Finals is brought to you by Pep Boys, 26,000 items at the guaranteed low price, tires and service too, everything but gas. And by Peerless Faucet, get more out of your faucet than just water. Let's take you straight to the factory hot rod point standings for the Winston Pro Stock Division. Jim Yates, of course, clinching the championship at Dallas. WJ came up a little bit short, but he's got a fend off the rest of them as they fight for those final positions inside the top 10. Bob Glidden sneaking into the top 10. Can he make it into ninth? We'll have to find out. 
which uh, the Pro Stock Division cars, the factory hot rod, set for their final run here at Pomona. And let's take you to the Valvoline ladder to show you how they would match up in round number one. WJ against Glidden, Edwards and Allen, Yates and KJ, Marnell and Morgan on the top half. On the bottom side, Powick against Coughlin, Ekman, Martino, Smith and Schmidt, Thomas and Williams. So that's how they would stack up. How would they perform? Let's take you to round number one. Bob Glidden and WJ. Mr. Six Second this year. Warren Johnson and Jim Yates have been dancing all around those six seconds. Could WJ get one in round number one? Not a problem for the professor. A 696, 197. If he hadn't broken those four times in round number one, the championship might have turned around. Kurt Johnson and Jim Yates. Get a six second pass. KJ breaks. Yates wins, but not with a six, a 7 0 as he wins the battle. On to round number two. Tom Martino up against Mark Powick. Now, Powick would become a member of the Holly Six Second Club this weekend. So did Mike Edwards. In this one. Martino, as you see Powick's car dancing all around the lane, Powick would get the win. And suddenly the Summit car with a 699 is a player. Remember, he's been working with WJ here in the later stages of the season. Mike Edwards up against the professor. This one would come down to a whole shot win. Slick 50 money going out to Mike Edwards as he gets the win on the whole shot and puts away the professor. And finally in round number two, Pete Williams up against Ricky Smith. Another whole shot. Tricky Ricky picks up money from Slick 50 as well as the win line as he trailers Pete Williams with a 7.03. And let's take another look at the ladder now so you can see how we worked our way into the semifinals. Edwards would come through as well with Yates on the top half of the ladder. And on the bottom side, Powick and Smith would get past Martino and Williams. So let's take you back now and show you the Pro Stock semifinals. The final four. Here's Edwards up against Yates. And guess what? The new champ is not going to be in the finals at Pomona. Edwards, who wraps up the Slick 50 Performer of the Year title, Gets the win, a 699. Ricky Smith up against Mark Powick. Smith in the near lane, Powick in the far lane. How good could that Summit car be? Just not good enough. Ricky Smith gets the win. What do you think, Steve? Well, look at this angelic countenance. Huh? You'd never know. Look at the tricky Ricky, but you're in the final because of two straight hole shots. What is it when you're on? Is it mental? Is it physical? What is it? I guess it's just mental, I guess, you know, Steve. It definitely ain't physical, because <laughs> I'm doing the best I can here, you know. I'm a grandpa now, and hey, with Troy and Ronnie helping me this year, Carrier, I'm just tickled to be in the finals. We've had a good year. We're fifth in the points, and if I win this race, we're fourth. And let me tell you what, as Bob Fry well knows, his opponent also got here via hole shots, right, Bob? Hey, Steve, this guy's a driving fool. Mike Edwards, you've had a great day. It's been a great year, and Mike, you're the first one to admit you can't do it alone. Yeah, that's true, Bob. I've got a lot of people to be thankful for. Uh, John and Mary Lou Kite, the owners of this car, give me the greatest opportunity in the world. I've dreamed of this opportunity, and now I have it. And uh, it's just been a wonderful year. I, I just thank God for everything, because he's made everything possible for me. He's had a great season and everything. If he wins this here today, might even be more exciting than an 81 Modified Championship that he won in that Ford Maverick. Ralph? How do you hole shot the hole shot artist? I don't know, but we're going to find out here shortly when these two who have met four times in eliminations will go head-to-head -head one more time. Ricky has the lead three to one. Can you hole shot him? Pro Stock Bikes, a flick of the wrist, and it's one rocket ride down the quarter mile. The only class where the points championship was up for grabs as we rolled into the Fairplex here at Pomona. The Winston Pro Stock bike standings looked like this. John Myers up against Dave Schultz. 
Matt Hines out of the championship hunt, but could hold on to third. John Smith, Rick Ward rounding out the top five. There's Angel Sealing, and something tells me by next year at this time, he's going to be a little bit farther up than just eighth in the point standings. In fact, she'll probably be contending for the title. Well, let's show you the Valvoline ladder for the Pro Stock Bikes. Of course, it was going to be very important as to where Schultz and Myers would start their day. Hines, Tonglet, Johnson, Scally, as you see the top half ladder, there's Schultz, C.J. Smith, Bartone, Cook, Myers and Reeves, and Arana and Nyberg. Well, John Myers and Dave Schultz, two of the best ever to swing a leg over a bike, going at it for a title here at Pomona. And we would start it off in round one with John Myers against Stephanie Reeves. Myers out and away. And then dead in the water. Can you believe it? Stephanie Reeves gets the win. No offense to Stephanie, but this should have been a walk away for John Myers. Another one of those deals. I don't know. Something broke. It wouldn't shift. Well, let's wait and find out what happened. I don't know. It's, uh... The championship went away, as did the bike as it wouldn't shift into gear. So Schultz would go up against C.J. Smith knowing what he had to do. Schultz would have to get through two rounds to clinch the title. Round one handled as he puts away C.J. Smith. And you saw it from Dave's view. On to round number two. If Schultz could put away Cook, he would claim the title in the Winston Pro Stock Bike category. Down the quarter mile, they would go at Pomona, and Dave Schultz would win the Pro Stock Bike title. Congratulations to the champion, David Schultz. Thank you. I wanted to hear you say that, Steve. I've been waiting for that. You were being so careful not to red light, it almost cost you there. You had it gunning down. Yeah, I know I did, but I felt like we'd made the changes on the bike, and, and Greg had really gotten a handle on where this bike needed to go all weekend, and so I felt like I could run him down. I just wanted to be really, I wanted to be really safe up there. So, with the title set, now we'd have to fight for the crown here at Pomona. Matt Hines against Steve Johnson. Hines in the near lane getting a good run from Steve Johnson, but Hines would catch him at the far end, get the win. He would also pick up the MBNA bonus of $2,000 to Matt Hines for an ET record of a 734 with a four. Here's a look at how they all move through. You would see Schultz would go up against the hammer, Hector Arana. And on to the semifinals we would go to see how Schultz and Arana and Smith and Hines would do. Schultz and the hammer. Schultz on your left. The hammer on the right and Hector red lights. And Dave takes an easy cruise down the boulevard. He's on his way to the finals with a 744. Matt Hines, the youngster, so strong early on in the season. John Smith in the far lane. With the entire Vance and Hines crew on hand, Matt Hines would see the trip to the final go away as John Smith would get the win with a 740, Steve. A vision in yellow is John Smith already pointed down the Pomona quarter mile. You have beaten Dave Schultz before in a final round, 93 the Gators. Can you do it once more? That was three years ago. I think I'm ready to do it again. Your riding has been absolutely spectacular, and this is a difficult racetrack in some ways. Well, we've, we've never really had that great a luck at this racetrack, and things really came together for us on the last qualifying pass, and we're, we're hanging on to the combination and eliminations. My man from Minnesota, I'm keeping him loose here, his corner man, Bob Fry. <laughs> yeah, you might be his corner man, but the guy over here is thinking about an knock. Dave. Yeah. Yeah, we've already done what we came here to do, was win the championship. Uh, you know, this, this is as much fun as I've had in a final. You know, the pressure's off. I'm just out here to race and have fun. The one thing about Dave Schultz is when he's relaxed, he's incredibly difficult to beat. So Dave Schultz and Smith getting set for the first final of the Winston Select Finals live on TNN for Pomona right after this. <laughs> they talk about when they say a sunset out in California. They don't get much more spectacular than that. The Winston Select Finals coming your way from Pomona. Well, there are 
four races left to go on the NHRA Winston Championship Tour, and John Smith and Dave Schultz are going to make up the first one. Bob, in this one, I think the edge has got to go to Schultz because he's so strong and so calm right now. Yeah, it really does. He's got the better race bike out here. I'll tell you what, though, the John Nord team and John Smith and that gang really is very confident. They think they can take him out, and don't be surprised if something strange goes on in the starting line. I think this one's won with a red light by one of the bikes. Steve? Very well, B. You can see how loose, thanks to me, my man John Smith really was. He was kind of shadow boxing there, sitting on the seat of that bike. He's only won one national event. Bear in mind, as we said, that was against Dave Schultz. Well, Smith runner-up at the Slick 50 Nationals earlier this year. Of course, Dave Schultz not only claimed a championship, but three wins in 1996. And there is not a bike better prepared on the tour, arguably, than the one that Greg Cope rolls out for Dave Schultz. The mind games are about to be played out. The top two lights are on. Now, what do you do? You run him and you go on board with Schultz. Schultz has a problem and Smith gets the win. Smith was done off the line. Schultz had him all the way down the racetrack till the bike let go. And John Smith has now won two national events, both of them coming against Dave Schultz. You can see how they came off the line. It was Schultz with a 436 reaction time to a little bit slower 441 for Smith. And then right there, you see the puffs of smoke. Schultz is done, and Smith, with a big grin, makes his way down the track. Now he's going to go real time with Dave. Uh, you heard it. It gave it up. And you bet, buddy, you are a winner at Pomona. And the winners are with Steve. Ah, yes. <laughs> Congratulations, young Thank man. You. I you knew you were in big trouble. You can see where he was. Yeah, he uh, he stuck it out on me pretty good. And then, uh, you know, it looked like something happened a little bit to his bike. And then all of a sudden, you know, because I, I got a little bit back on him, and all of a sudden he was gone. This is going to warm up that Minnesota winter, isn't it? Absolutely. It's, it's coming around the corner, man. This is an awesome way to end the year with Plasti Dip, Noka Ramsey, all them guys are doing a great job for us. Just can't wait till next year. We can't either. Jennifer Schramm has the beautiful Winston Trophy. Bob Fry. Thank you. Here's a look at the Winston Pro Stock Bike Point standings. This is how they will finish up after 12 events. Just a top five. Dave Schultz wins another championship. John Myers comes up just short. Matt Hines, what a great year that young sensation has had. He will be a player from now on. John Smith and the Hammer round out in the top five. There is a Pro Stock finalist, and they are coming up when we come back. And remember, these guys have been going through the day on hole shots. Who can hole shot who when we come back? TNN's exclusive live coverage of the Winston Select Finals is brought to you by Mopar Chrysler Corporation Parts and the Chrysler Plymouth Dodge Jeep and Eagle dealers who sell and install them. It has been an incredible season for the Pro Stock fields this year. We've seen the quickest fields ever. We've seen the most intense competition this division has ever produced. We're going to wrap it all up here at Pomona with Ricky Smith. There you see him sitting inside of Troy Humphrey's carrier car going up against Mike Edwards. Ricky Smith just having a little, uh, waiting a little bit to get the car uh, set to go. Maybe this is a part of the mind games. What do you think, Bob? Hell, I was just going to go over and take a look at that. And I'm not really sure if he's playing any mind games or not. I thought they might have had a little bit of mechanical problem with the race car. You know, in the fuel cars, they try to jockey back and forth. Who's going to do the long burnout and who's going to do the short burnout? And I don't think there was any mind games there. This is going to be a great drag race. Steve, when it comes down to the battle of the whole shots, do you give it to Tricky Ricky or do you give it to the guy that has won the whole shot award, Steve? I think this is the final that might result in a red light. If it does, it may well be in Ricky Smith's lane. Mike Edwards knows he's got a bit of a performance advantage, a couple of six-second runs. He doesn't have to push the tree as hard. Ricky, well, Ricky's going to take a chance. But there you see Mike Edwards. He does have two wins. He's been to the finals four times. Now, Ricky has only been to the finals once this year. That was at Indianapolis, and he came up the runner-up. Now we get into the staging duel. Look at this. Edwards is all set to go. Away they 
ones and the win line goes to Mike Edwards a 701 with an O to a losing 701 with a two Edwards brings it to a slow stop at the far end and let's take a look at the replay off the line it was a 439 for Edwards to a slower 466 with Ricky Smith and you saw the battle they played on this starting line might have been just enough Ricky gave him a run at the far end, but he couldn't match up. And Mike Edwards has his third win of the year, Steve. The quiet man from Oklahoma, who also is the crew chief on this car, very emotional right now, trying to get the window netting down, get everything unbuckled. Out he comes. Tell me about what was going on on the starting line there, Big Mike. Uh, anytime you run the, the trickster there, it's uh, never know what risk going to do. He's a heck of a driver, so... Uh... Awesome day, Steve. Awesome day. But you were the one with the starting line advantage. Identical elapsed times, but Jennifer has this for you. Thanks, Jennifer. Something I've worked awful hard for, Steve. Boy, hard work doesn't even describe this guy, Ralph. No, it doesn't, but winner definitely does. And he is definitely a winner here today. And he will finish third in the Winston Pro Stock point standings after 19 races across the country. Jim Yates, of course, clinching the championship in Dallas. Well, we're going to start... Twisted in some nitro into what we've got coming your way when we come back with the top fuel final. There sits Scott Coletta. He is looking to win a big bonus. Can he get it here today? We'll find out when we come back. Commercial transportation for this broadcast has been provided by Ryder, the official transportation company for off land. Well, we are back to Pomona, where we are bringing you live coverage of the finals from the Winston Select Finals. There is Joe Amato, but Bob Fry, where is his competitor? Well, he just made it to the line, didn't he? Well, they're all set and ready to go. I talked to uh, Jimmy Prock, and he said they have used the same set of heads on this race car all day long, and that's amazing because this has been like a bracket car, albeit a very fast bracket car. Joe Amato has been a real champion here at this race. We think back to that great 1990 final with the late Gary Ormsby. He knows what to do here at this racetrack. Scott Collette is a little bit more sluggish time-wise, but then remember, Scott was the underdog yesterday, and we know how that came out. Well, you're real tempted to lay your money down on Joe Amato, the 462, the 463, but I'm not going to make that mistake. I underestimated Scott Coletta yesterday afternoon in the Budweiser Classic, as did Bob Fry, and they stepped right up 215, 216 miles an hour, mid-460 run. I think this is a pick -em deal. I'm going to go ahead and go with Scott Coletta. going to go with Scott Glenn. I think it is his weekend. As you take a look at Joe Amato, who was arriving late to the staging lanes, I think it's Coletta's weekend. Remember, he has got the big bonus that he is shooting for. There was 100 grand for winning the Bud Classic yesterday, which he did. There is 50 grand for winning the main event here tonight, which he could possibly do. And then there will be a $50,000 bonus from the NHRA if he is able to double up on the weekend. And of course, there's another 30 grand sitting out there for MDNA if he can set an ET record in the process. Scott, with just one national event win this year, Western Auto Nationals, I just get the funny feeling it is his time to really put a cap or two. His season has been not exactly the kind of season that he wanted. Now, Joe Amato may have been dancing all around with this car, and it has been strong since the beginning of the day, posting a 315-mile-an-hour run in the first round. Jimmy Proc been throwing everything on they got in the trailer into Amato's car and it's all set to go. Hot fuel, the final run of the 96 season since the mountain down tight Scott. Here comes 6,000 horsepower.
with a four, 312 miles an hour as Joe Amato picks up his second national event win of the 96 season. Let's go back and take a look at this in our replay. Amato quicker out of the lights, a 466 to a 511. Both cars performing pretty well the majority of the way down the racetrack. You see all the flames are lit, but Amato's car was just a little bit quicker. The 466 gets it, Steve. If you're looking for the party tonight, just find the nearest good Italian restaurant. Joe Amato will be there. What a winner we're going to have, Steve. We're going to have a big party tonight. You know, I can't say enough to Jimmy Proc, Jim Brissett, the Walsh boys, Freddie, uh, my girlfriend Diamond sets with me. Oh, I'm gonna forget something. I know I am. Sal's with us, and, and Billy came to help drive the truck home. He, and he was at English Town. We won too, so maybe there's an omen to that. But uh, for all our fans and our Keystone Key Parts customers, and and the Dynamax and Valvoline and Autolite and everybody at American Racing Wheels, they all hung tough with us, and they they've been there for us all year. And we got a big deal working next year with a sponsor, and we may be out here. We might have the best deal for money in town. If we do. Trust me, we're going to have a run of that world championship. Polish up the little gold man here, Joe. He's going to be hoarse in about an hour. Boy, I hope we got time for the funny card final now. Bernstein clinches the championship, and that is how the top fuel point standings will wrap up as you take a look at the top five. And our Mopar top performer of the day, it will be Joe Amato, our Mopar high performer of the weekend here at... Pomona. How exciting this is. You know, Scott Collette is a good team. There he is. He Joe, he's still talking. The only guy that can maybe out-talk that guy. Here's John Force, and you see it over his shoulder. It's black, it's white, and it comes with flames. The Castle GTX 6th Championship Anniversary Car. There you see John Force getting set. The funny cars have just pulled into the staging lane, so it's going to be a minute or two before they're ready to go. John Force walks over to talk to Steve Gibbs, and there's Tony Pedragon getting strapped into his car. Well, we've already crowned some champions this weekend, and we want to take a chance now to salute the champions who have found their way to glory land. Ready to go. Glory Land. John Force has found his way to Glory Land six times as they get set to light that evil looking black commemorative car with the flames on it. John's sixth championship. Great looking car, Steve. Could be a winner. It could be, but don't forget that green and white Castro car also knows how to find the winner's circle. 
There's no points at stake here. All the money goes in the same bank account. We were in their pits. We saw everybody had equal parts, equal labor. I think Tony Pedagon, based on the couple of runs, when you got to throw out that one we smoke the tires, has got a very good chance of beating the boss, and the boss actually might even enjoy it. Shame, this is a car that had a little bit of trouble, Tony Petragon's car. They were struggling a little bit to get it ready to go racing and looking like frustration on the face of the crew. Bob? This car is not going to start, boys. They had problems back there in the pit area. They had to swap mags at the last minute. They're down here uh, just now getting set to untrap Tony Pedregon. It is going to be a single for that car here in the final. So they were over there in the pit area. They were. That's one of the reasons why they were a little late getting these funny cars up into the staging lanes. Forrest was ready. Tony came in. As they were pulling into the lanes, they were trying to readjust the ignition and the timing. Just never did get it to fire over. So it's going to be a single here in the finals. You see Kelly Pryor taking a look at it. And Tony climbing out of the car. Well... John Force is about to get, are you ready for this? His 13th national event win in one year. And this car, take a good look at it, because it is the last time you will see this body in competition as you see a dejected Tony Petragon. What a roller coaster ride he has had today, beating his brother Cruz, who Frank Petragon told me earlier today that he used to hold Tony down so Cruz could beat up on him. Guess what? Tony beat up on his brother. He's not thinking about that right now. John Force, this car destined for a place in the showroom and Force's new race shop. The only time you'll see it race live in competition. wanted to give this Pat Cranstand here in Pomona everything he could. And I know when he gets out to talk to Steve Evans at the far end, that'll be exactly what he will tell him. And I think the reason why, of course, he knew he was going to be going up against Tony. There you see Tony's reaction. Just a little bit more dejection. This poor struggles to get it off the line. John came loaded for bear, didn't he, Bob? Yeah, that was some way to end it. A couple of great finals coming in. You know, I just want to take a quick moment. There are a lot of big fires here in Southern California lately. There's two great drag racing fans, Scott French and William Jensen, big time fans that were burned badly in those fires. They're in the Glendale Fire District. They're watching on TNN. We don't normally take moments to say hi to people, but we hope they get better soon. And they did a great job here. And we appreciate all of their efforts. Some finals here today, guys. Steve? Underneath that helmet, I think John Four shares Tony's disappointment. That's not how you wanted this act to come out. Nope, nope. That was uh, ruined my day, Steve. We wanted to come in here and run. We knew Tony back in the pits had problems. They tried to start the car three times. They had to change motors. They lost the motor on the last run when they smoked the tires like I just did. And we knew it. We And, you know, we're trying to make TV. We pushed it. It's not good. Don't matter to me. I just, I want to race the kid. And I'm just aggravated as hell. It'll come, John. It'll come. Congratulations on a record-setting season. If John Force could take that car back up to the starting line and do it all over again right now for the fans, he would. As you look at the Winston Funny Car Point standings after 19 events, John has got six championships. Tony comes home in second. It's been a great season for the gang. So long from Pomona.